So we talked about the fact that this is under two big headings when we think about straight line motion. We want to think about does the direction matter or does it not? Um, this is not necessary, but uh, just to fill in some um, knowledge for all of you and particularly to connect it with the physics people and like, oh yes, this is a thing I know about. Good morning. <laughs> when we talk about direction mattering, what we're talking about is quantities that are what we call vectors. Oh, something's wrong with my pencil this morning. Vectors, right? Vectors are things which have uh, a, a magnitude, a size, and they also have a direction, like positive or negative. Or you can actually have directions that go in all which way, whatever. But for us, because we're only in a straight line, you can only go one way or it's opposite, because that's all you've got on the line, okay? When you don't worry about the direction, when all you're caring about is the magnitude, the size, right? We call that a scalar. So everything you can see on the left-hand column are what we call vector quantities, they're vectors. Uh, whereas everything on the right-hand column are scalars. Uh, you only get the size of something. Morning, man. Okay, now the heading this morning is about motion with calculus. So we talked about the change in uh, these different aspects, whether you care about direction or not, but we only thought about it in average terms. That's all you can do without calculus, right? But now that we do have calculus, we can do better than just working out the change over a period of time. Calculus allows us to work out gradient, not over an interval, but gradient at a point, right? Now what that corresponds to in motion terms is we can say not just change over time, but change at an instant of time. Because it's change at a single instant in time, at a single point, uh, this is also called instantaneous change. Does this ring a bell? What was our last topic? It was, or subtopic I should say, it was exponential growth and decay. And we had a table just like this where we considered average growth rates and we also considered instantaneous growth rates. Do you remember that? So. How do we work out the change at an instant? Well, if we call that, let's switch color. If we call that V for velocity, okay, this is now getting to the point where we, re we really emphasize down here, and this is actually a question you will see less and less as you go further through the course, okay? All we're comparing is, on the left-hand column, displacement, how it changes, in comparison to Time. We want the derivative that relates those two. Okay. So if I'm comparing displacement, I would say dx, and when I compare that with how time is changing, I would say on dt. Right. Now, differentiating with respect to time is pretty much as common as differentiating with respect to x. You know how when you started, everything was dy on dx, dy on dx, and we hardly ever saw anything else. Then we moved into rates of change, and we're like, oh, you might differentiate with respect to the radius, or with respect to the length of the side of a triangle, or something like that. Time is the one that you're going to see most frequently from this, this point on. Okay, It's not the only one, but as a consequence of it being so common, we get a new little piece of notation that means specifically differentiate with respect to time. And it's x with a little dot over the top. Okay, So you've seen x dash. I'm not a huge fan of x dash because of how similar it looks to x to the power of 1, uh, because of how lazy I am when I write 1's, but x dot pretty much universally means this and you won't confuse it with anything else. Also, you will see x dot a whole lot, so you want to recognize it, okay? Now, this is going to be a value and it's going to have positive or negative, which indicates its direction, but if we want to think about when direction doesn't matter, all you have to do is take this derivative, take its value, and say, well, don't worry about whether it's positive or negative. That's it. That's all you have to worry about. Okay, take the absolute value and you're there. Now, we go from the quantity, displacement, distance, whatever, down to this change at an instant by way of a first derivative, right? We differentiate once and this is what we get. What would happen if we differentiated another time? Well, if you think about how velocity is changing over time, we have a name for that concept, we call it acceleration. So you can put that over here on the left hand side. Acceleration. Now, just like velocity above, acceleration, A, gets lots of different uh, ways to describe it, and we're going to cover a few here. So firstly, by definition, morning, by definition, acceleration is the change in velocity 
over time. So that's the change in velocity, right? That's dv, I might make it a bit bigger for you, right? Over time, there you go. But since v itself is also a derivative, see up there, right? v is a derivative. So if you differentiate that again, I can say that actually acceleration is not just the derivative of velocity, it's also the second derivative of displacement. Okay, now, because it's the second derivative of displacement, you differentiate x with respect to time twice, I can not just call it that, but you know, because that's a bit of a long thing to write, I can say, well, it, instead of x dot, which is differentiate with respect to time once, it's x double dot, which looks kind of like a weird emoji, but it's, it's the acceleration, okay? So, you're like, wow, all these different ways to say acceleration, um, and they all mean the same thing. Now, I, I mentioned before that we're going to complete this table, except for a teeny little bit. Um, this is all we're going to cover for now. And the table is, it's complete, okay? This is everything that as two unit students you'll need to cover in motion. But this last little box down here, acceleration, we are going to return to it in an extension one way a little bit later on. So, like I said, make sure you don't lose this page. All right, now, one more thing before we actually get started on doing some questions. Okay, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Here we go. Here's one I prepared earlier. Okay, now, I just want to make a quick note about acceleration because it's such a weird and important word, okay? Acceleration has two completely separate meanings depending on who says the word and in what context. So if you were just having a conversation with someone on the street and you're saying, my car is accelerating, right? All they mean is you're speeding up, right? Put your foot on the accelerator, right? And it makes your car go faster. Okay. Now, I want you to hear the words that I'm using and note that when we're talking about speed, we're only talking about the, the magnitude of how fast you're going. We don't care about direction, right? Which is why the opposite of accelerating in that colloquial sense is decelerating, which means you're not increasing in speed, you're decreasing in speed, right? That's the way we would talk about things in, in normal terms, okay? That is not how we talk about things in mathematics and physics, okay? And this is something, hooray, we actually share in common with them. When we talk about acceleration in this sense and in the course, this is the only sense I'm going to talk about in acceleration. So in this room, this is what acceleration means. It just means that the velocity is changing. Now that can mean it's getting bigger or it's getting smaller, getting more negative or less negative. Just change in any way at all, okay? And what that means is, if you're accelerating in a positive or negative direction, that's something you can talk about because it's a vector. It's got direction built into it, right? As a consequence, um, you can go ahead and write this, right? Put like a big red warning for yourself to never, ever say the word decelerating in this course, okay? It has a colloquial meaning, but it is so confusing with what we're talking about down here, and we never really talk about, this is why I left this part here, right? I left it open. We never really talk about acceleration with regard to, like when we don't care about distance. We don't really talk about it as a scalar in the context of this course. So as a consequence, just don't use the word decelerating, it's just not worth it. Um, if you're wondering, why would I even use the word decelerating? Sometimes they will ask you to describe in words words describe verbally the motion of an object, a particle, a car, a ball, a weight, a person. They will say, use some words, here's an equation, tell me what is going on. And you'll be tempted to use the word decelerating when at some point you see it slowing down. But that's such a confusing way to describe it based on what we talk about as acceleration that I'm going to encourage you to never ever use that word, okay?